my name's Johnny, and I'm going to take you through a quick scenario in Train Simulator 2021, explain a bit about my channel, and introduce myself. Here we go. Hello driver, there is no time to lose here, and we need to perform this run, run around, as quickly as possible, before the next mainline service arrives. You have clearance to leave on the sidings, so go ahead over the viaduct and pass the signal on the up line before stopping and awaiting further instruction. So, simple run. Going to run over the viaduct, the Ribblehead viaduct, on the Settle and Carlisle, perform a small run around manoeuvre, and then head back down. And in that time, hopefully, I'll tell you all you need to know about what my plans are for this channel and who I am and stuff like that so that you f feel familiar enough to perhaps come back and watch some more videos. Off we go. So, one of the most important facts about me is that I really, really love trains. Pretty much everything about them. From the wheels, the wheel arrangements, to the tenders. The list goes on and on. Even performing a simple run-around duty. My settling Carlisle at Ribblehead is an incredibly exciting thing for me to do. So, really, with this channel, I kind of want to uh, just show you, or the world, how I drive trains in Train Simulator, and the, the time I spend driving them, and maybe what my hints and tips are with 10 years of train driving experience in the game. Um, I'd also like to... Uh, some reviews. I know there's a there's a certain uh, element in Train Simulator YouTube surrounding steam in the UK and, uh, and, and sort of steam enthusiasm more generally that's slightly less touched upon than the diesel side of things, um, which I would very much like to contribute to. And really, just an artistic and communicative outlet. Uh, within these trying times. I'm just going to jump the flower around here because we're heading up quite the gradient over a little bit of a minor. on this route by now. And this is a simple introduction to my channel with some steam rail fanning at Ribblehead <laughs> on a very short run. So this is one of the uh, standard scenarios included with the Sattel in Carlisle add-on pack. There's a couple of quite good scenarios revolving around Steam and this really for the price. It's one of the, uh, the classic packs, so you can get it for about $14.99. Um, it comes with a, an EWS Class 37, uh, an EWS Class 66, some nice hoppers. Um, with the Jubilee class, although not the best model, it is still nice to look at uh, and a good addition to your collection. And it comes with this uh, this little 4F. Not the grandest of trains by all means, but a true, true workhorse. 
terms of the state below. So we're heading up to Bleemore up reverse. Which is, as it says on the tip, a reversing point. So that we can run around this rank of coaches and pull them back into the station. in the other locos that are available uh, to me. Not that I dislike a bit of diesel or the MU action, really. <coughs> so I will be largely focusing on, hopefully, steam driving, but mainly driving in the, in the UK. Saturn Carlisle is one of those classic places to start. Um, so, give another instruction. Okay, driver, make sure you have left enough room at the back of the train in order to recouple, and once you're satisfied, couple the locomotive and tender from the carriages. Okay, well, we'll do just that. I'll stop putting water into the boiler. We have room at the back of the locomotive to recouple. We've given ourselves plenty of room here. So what we're going to do is I'll show you the process. We will uncouple by going into the uncouple menu, clicking the coupling behind the tender. And now we will do as the instruction says. We're now clear to proceed just beyond signal BM2, where you are to stop and await further instruction. Perfect opportunity to get a thumbnail here. Okay, off we go, we'll release the brakes, open the cylinder cocks. Theoretically, start pulling away. There's only one way I find to drive a steam locomotive and that's to be leaning out the driver's side. Something about the view down the tracks, you can almost imagine the, the wind in your face and maybe the flies and other things. So we'll just lightly pull up into Cleveland South. the full brakes here. So we're halfway through this runaround manoeuvre, I'm just going to change the lights around. So now we're reversing, and actually our front facing is the tender. As you can see I've overfilled the uh, tender with the, the tank with boiler with water. <laughs> Common mistake. The road has now been set for you by Bleemore Box. You are to reverse through the goods loop while observing the 15 mile an hour speed limit and then at the other end of the loop, you are clear to re-enter the main running line 
and are required to stop just beyond signal BM25 where further instruction will be given. So let's release the brakes and we should naturally start rolling back down the hill. There we go. So yeah, I'd say um, the Settle in Carlisle for the selection it gives you and the number of scenarios, I can't quite remember how many scenarios it gives you, but I've pretty much played them all at this point. It's definitely uh, definitely worth a try, simply because it's just the most famous route, <laughs> pretty much, that's on here, um, from the UK, that is. Uh, it's very, very, very beautiful, um, and it's in the Classics range, so... The scenery is actually above par for what you'd expect from the Train Simulator Classics range. Uh, it's also not quite as demanding on your PC. If you have a slightly more low-end PC, it can run the Settling Carlisle with uh, with relative ease. Let's play more signal box. Just pulling down into Bleemore North Run around here. So I'm going to lightly set some brake. Make sure we're past this ground signal here. before we pull up back to the coaches and take them back down to Ribblehead. We are now ready to run forward and retrieve the coaches. This ground signal requires you to press tab in order to contact the signaller and gain special permission to proceed into the occupied block. Once permission is approved, gently roll towards the coaches and couple to them. Cylinder cocks back on. Slight bit of regulator on so that we don't get overcome by the hill and start rolling backwards. And then just press tab and request to pass the signal. security. Here we go. Back up the hill towards our coaches. These are really, truly lovely locos. The sounds aren't fantastic, but they're very, very nicely modelled. Any steam train driving tips will always be appreciated, <laughs> especially from those who've driven them themselves. Also, um, if you know Train Simulator, or even if you don't, um, 
and you're watching this, I'd love it if you could uh, just drop a comment and let me know what route or train you'd, you'd like me to drive next. I'm, I'm happy to pick any out of my collection, it's quite expansive, so I'll be able to let you know or even get it to review it for you. Slowly pulling up to these coaches ahead of us. I want to make things as comfortable as possible in case there's any passengers on board. Probably isn't because we pulled them out of the siding. But there we go. We are now ready to run tender first to Ribblehead, where we will pick up passengers, followed by the short descent to settle. cleverly put the handbrakes on some of the coaches before so they didn't roll down the hill and I went and scuppered myself as I tried to leave. <laughs> Off we go. Ready for another exciting uh, journey across the Ribblehead Viaduct. to stop us over speeding as we head over the viaduct. There we go. Now we can fly out into free view. Take a look at that beautiful Dale's background. another thumbnail idea. There's always this white van suspiciously lurking round on train simulator routes as well. I assume everyone parked at the bottom of the viaduct is uh, train spotting. At least that's what I would think. We've got a class 158. That is one con. I would say of this route, the class 158s have a, uh, a bug on the lights, which I don't believe has been fixed yet, which means that when you turn the normal night running front headlights on, as the scenarios are quite dark, only tailing or trail lights come on at the back, so you only get tailing marker light, unfortunately. Just using that brake power from coming down the hill to slow us down into Ripple head platform one. As that 158 aggressively accelerates to uh, make its way up the hill. should be just in the platform there and I'll apply the brake to full to avoid any movement while we're stopped. There we have it. Full stop at Ribblehead. I love the, uh, the backdrop of the settling Carlisle. Just moors, large hills, viaducts, tunnels. And it's a 
very large challenge to get a steam train over the entirety of the route. This is a relatively simple task, but uh, when it comes to crossing the entirety of this, it's uh, quite the slog. Right. Onwards to Settle Platform 1. Fills up much quicker than uh, some of the other locos. I'll take some time now just to tell you about the uh, the loco we're driving, or the London Midland and Scottish Fowler 4F. So, the London Midland and Scottish Railway Fowler Class 4F is a class of 060 steam locomotive designed for medium freight work. They represent the ultimate development of the Midland Railway's six coupled tender engines. Many train spotters know them, knew them as Duck Sixes, which is a nickname derived from their wheel arrangement. The 4F was based on the 197 strong Midland Railway 3835 class of 1911 a few modifications, primarily the adoption of left-hand drive instead of right-hand drive. They originally had been designed by Henry Fowler. The Midland Railway locomotives were notorious for their short axle box bearings, which were prone to overheating. The design feature was perpetuated in the LMS 4F. The problem was eventually solved with the fitting of mechanical lubricators. that's included within the Settle and Carlisle pack. It's a Class 66 crawling up to the top of Bleemore Summit. Or the long drag as it's known. The LMS constructed 530 of the locomotives between 1923 and 28 numbered sequentially from where the Midland engines left off from 4027. A further 45 examples were reluctantly authorised by William Stanier in 1937 at the behest of the operating department. Missing numbers 445, 4557 to 61 relate to five locomotives built for the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway to the Midland Railway. 3835 class design in 1922, taken into LMS stock in 1930. All entered British Railways stock in 1948. BR added 40,000 to their numbers. They were all withdrawn between 1959 and 1966. So, as you can see now, we're heading down from the summit at great speed and near 60 miles an hour.
and some of the uh, sights and sounds of the settle in Carlisle. a bit of history of the satellite camera. The Settle to Carlisle line, also known as the Settle in Carlisle, is a 73 mile long main railway line in northern England. The route, which crosses the remote scenic regions of the Yorkshire Dales and the North Pennines, runs between Settle Junction on the Leeds to Morecambe line and Carlisle, near the English-Scottish borders. The historic line was constructed in the 1870s and has several notable tunnels and viaducts, such as the imposing Ribble Head. The line is part of the National Rail Network that is managed by Network Rail. All passenger services are operated by Northern, apart from temporary diverted services due to closures of the West Coast Main Line. Stations serve towns such as Settle in North Yorkshire, Appleby and Westmoreland in Cumbria, and small rural communities along its route. In the 1980s, British Rail planned to close the Settle to Carlisle line. This prompted a campaign to save the line by rail groups, enthusiasts, local authorities and residents along the route. In 1989, the UK government announced the line would be saved from closure. Since then, passenger numbers have grown steadily to 1.2 million in 2012. Eight formerly closed stations have been reopened and several quarries have been reconnected to the line. It remains one of the most popular railway routes in the UK for charter trains and specials. After damage by a landslip, part of the line was closed from February 2016 to March 2017. To celebrate the reopening, the first regular mainline scheduled service in England for nearly half a century ran with a steam engine. The railway itself had its origins in railway politics. The expansion-minded Midland Railway Company was locked in a dispute with rival company London and North Western Railway over access to the latter's rights tracks in Scotland, or to Scotland. The Midlands access to Scotland was via the Little North Western route to Ingleton. The Ingleton branch line from Ingleton to Low Gill, where it joined the Lancaster and Carlisle Railway, was under control of the rival London North Western. Initially, the routes, although physically connected at Ingleton, were not logically connected, as the London North Western Railway in Midland not agree on sharing the use of Ingleton Station. Instead, the London North Western terminated its trains at its own station at the end of Ingleton Viaduct, and Midland Railway passengers had to walk about a mile over steep gradients between the two stations in order to change into and from London North Western Railway trains. An agreement was reached over station access enabling the Midland to attach through carriages to London North Western Railway trains at Ingleton. Passengers could continue their journey north without leaving the train. The situation was not ideal, as the London North Western Railway handled the through carriages of its rival with deliberate obstru obstructiveness. For example, attaching the coaches to slow goods trains instead of passenger workings. The route through Ingleton is closed, but the major structures, Low Gill and Ingleton Viaducts, remain. It was a well-engineered line suitable for express passenger running, but its potential was never realised. 
due to the rivalry between the companies. The Midland Board decided that the only solution was a separate route to Scotland. Surveying the line began in 1865, and in June 1866 parliamentary approval was given to the Midlands Bill, for which Samuel Carter was solicitor. Soon afterwards, the Overham Gurney banking failure sparked a financial crisis in the UK. Interest rates rose sharply, several railways went bankrupt, and the Midlands Board, prompted by a shareholders' revolt, began to have second thoughts about a venture whose estimated cost was £2.3 million, equivalent to £210 million in 2019. I'll just pop some brakes on now. <laughs> As a result, in April 1869, with no work started, the company petitioned Parliament to abandon the scheme that it had earlier fought for. However, Parliament, under pressure from other railways, which would benefit from the scheme that would cost them nothing, refused, and the construction commenced in November that year. As the date falls between the publication of the first edition of the first 125,000 Ordnance Survey map and its first revision, the impact of construction can be observed by surveying those maps. With 1.3 miles to go to settle, I'm going to return to focusing on driving this train and bringing it into its destination as we come off quite a steep incline into Settle, and I do not trust the brakes of a 4F as far as I can throw them. So the plan will be to uh, upload videos to YouTube such as this, gauge what people want who would actually like to watch the channel, and then sort of listen to your recommendations and requests and provide as much, uh, as many facets of railway history as humanly possible in the half an hour to one hour long videos. Um, sometimes I could do a bumper special occasionally on a long journey, say half of the West Coast Main Line, or a quarter of the West Coast Main Line, where we go through the history of, uh, of the whole line on the journey procedurally and take a look at the scenery. I may have too cautiously come in to settle, but it is a steep platform on a 1 in 100, and as I said, again, I do not trust the brakes of the Fowler 4 f in the slightest. slightly too long to stop on the inside of the platform. Quite the enthusiasts to get a good, uh, good view of the loco from the platform as well. But here we are, Settle Station. Perhaps another thumbnail opportunity. Just here. Yes, so uh, tell me how you feel, and I'm sure I'll make more videos, more history to come, more content to come, and maybe even some reviews. As this uh, text box says, well done driver, you've managed to complete all tasks.